So two days ago, I made a video showing you guys 25, I don't even want to call them minor details, just details that you may have missed from the Fallout 76 gameplay dump. In that video, I asked you guys if you'd like a follow-up video showing you 25 more details, and well, that's this video. Many of you requested this, and actually in the comments of the previous one, suggested other things I should cover, but even beyond that, I went through some of the other footage we did get, and even footage that had only been released in the past few days. Something very important to note though, some of the stuff I'm showing you in the background, actually a majority of that stuff, is not my own footage. I'm using small snippets of other people's gameplay to actually show off that particular thing they found. I have links to literally all of these sources down below, so if you see something you think, oh that looks cool, I implore you guys to check out the full video, it probably has a more extended look at whatever that thing was. But as one final disclaimer, number 24 and 25 on this list are spoilers, they're actually showing off some of the endgame monsters, specifically the Mothman and the Flatwoods monster. I know some people like to skip ahead, so if you're going to do that and you don't want to see those two creatures, don't skip to the ending part of this video. So for number one on this list, I actually want to make a correction from last video. I incorrectly said that there were no other vaults in Fallout 76, just Vault 76. The source on that was actually talking about vaults that players come out of. I thought they were referring to vaults in general, but in reality they were just referring to kind of starting zones or places where you would spawn. It turns out Fallout 76 actually does have other vaults. This was taken from an interview comicbook.com conducted with somebody at Bethesda, but there's a little bit of a catch here. Despite the fact that other vaults actually do exist, you can't enter them. Seemingly we'll be able to find maybe the vault door, but never be able to open that vault door, just kind of look at it. Again, there's no footage of any of these, and we're not really sure where they are, so it's kind of hard to deduce what role they'll actually play, if any. Although it does keep me hopeful, as maybe that could be future content or even DLC for this game. But speaking of future content or DLC, throughout my gameplay, and actually some others gameplay, you could see robots, but they were kind of customized through the robot DLC options we had in Fallout 4. They would have different attachments on their arms, and potentially potentially even some different attachments on their legs. This is notable because the framework is there, it's in the game. Unfortunately, players don't quite have access to it, but maybe in a future update that's something we'll be able to actually use. Yesterday I made a video talking about the interview I had with Bethesda at the Greenbrier event, and something they touched on there was companions coming in the future as a likely possibility. Vats has without a doubt been one of the things to come under fire most with all this new gameplay coming out. It's very different than previous fallouts, and some people, myself included, aren't a fan of that. Well, user indecisive username 2 on Reddit actually pointed out that you could see in many a true nerd's gameplay that weapon modifications will actually play a pretty significant role in your VAT's chances. In this first clip, he has no modifications, just using a basic one, and in the later clip, he has modifications that increase his range and thus his likelihood of hitting. The statistical difference of hitting between the two is actually pretty big. That coupled with perk cards will probably make it so VAT's does have some very legitimate usability in this game. It was pointed out on my previous video covering these that you could actually see something called a 10mm SMG perforating magazine. That seems to be some kind of armor piecing mag that you can apply to the 10mm. Are there going to be other modifications like this in the game, such as explosive or incendiary ammo? In a PvP game like this, being able to switch to something that is armor piercing could be extremely valuable when you're taking on a group of other people in power armor. In Fallout 76, container loot is instanced to each individual player, so as everyone walks up to a corpse, they're going to have different loot generated for them. But loot that's floating around is actually going to be the same for everybody. If I pick up a weapon leaning against a wall, the next person to walk through may not see it there. This will respawn after a certain amount of time, but it also brings up the question as, can you kind of farm these locations? It's been speculated that the respawn timer for this loot is going to be roughly 30 minutes, but of course that could be tweaked in the final build of the game. Octavius Bangwolf actually made a Reddit post showing some of the base stats for Fallout 76, and a lot of them are quite different from Fallout 4. HP seems to be a bit higher to start off, but on the flip side, carry weight's actually significantly lower than Fallout 4 to start off, being at 155 and increasing by 5 points with each level in strength. In Fallout 4, you started at 200 and got 10 additional carry weight with each level of strength. Of course, there's still other perks like backpacks and things like that affecting this, but there definitely are some significant carry weight changes with this game, and you'll probably be able to carry less overall. But even beyond that, even with investment in certain perks, like if you put 5 points in special, you only get 25 more carry weight. It's not as big of a change as that would have been 50 carry weight in Fallout 4.
floor. Speaking of carry weight though, being over encumbered in Fallout 76 is actually quite a bit different. You no longer get that super slow walking thing that was immensely frustrating. Now you walk at a normal pace, but you'll notice your action points do take a hit. You still can't fast travel or anything like that, but you could at least get short distances while over encumbered like to your workbench. This thing from the E3 gameplay has remained a mystery for so long, but we actually got a short glimpse of it in game. It seems like it's actually going to be a plasma gatling gun. You can see this dev actually spooling it up a little bit, although unfortunately he never fires it. In this game, we have super and diluted versions of various chems. For example, the diluted stim pack is going to heal you for half as much as a regular stim pack, while the super variant is going to heal you for twice as much. Or at least that's how it worked in Fallout New Vegas, so it's assumed that's how it'll work in Fallout 76. These apply not only to the stim packs, I've also seen Radex and Radaway variants of this, and I'm sure it applies to a lot of other chems also. But speaking of chems, in this game, you're actually only going to be allowed to have one chem active at a given time. In Fallout 4, it was very popular to just kind of pop everything in a tight situation, but that's not going to be a viable option in Fallout 76. Although I wouldn't be shocked if maybe one of the perk cards actually changed this. In Oxford's gameplay, we saw these things called blank hollow tapes. We've never seen them in action, but that could be a very interesting mechanic of players leaving notes for other players. Who knows what role they'll actually play, but blank hollow tapes have been something a lot of people have been asking for for a long time, and it'd be kind of cool if we actually see it in this game since it's multiplayer. In my gameplay, after shooting some of the sandbags, you'll realize they actually have a health bar and thus are destroyable. I think this mechanic can lead to a lot of really cool moments, especially in PvP engagements. One massive quality of life change with this game is quest items are actually highlighted in your inventory. So you'll see some of these items are required for some of the quests I do have active and they have that little star next to them. In a couple of the gameplays, you can actually see this traveling super mutant traitor. He seems to be at least somewhat more intelligent than a lot of the other super mutants in the game, and I do wonder if there's going to be more intelligent super mutants like this, kind of similar to how Virgil worked in Fallout 4. But also, notice next to his name how there's three stars? Well, basically the legendary system in Fallout 76 got a bit of an overhaul. There's going to be tiers of legendary enemies now. You can see some with just one star, that's like the basic version. Then we have this guy with three stars, and there's probably someone out there with two stars. What this will mean exactly isn't clear, but I would assume the more stars, the tougher the enemy, but even beyond that, they'll probably have better loot on their character. Something very interesting introduced with this game, as you craft gear yourself, you're going to get a randomly sized condition bar. The condition bar is like the durability of it, when it drops to zero, that item will break. Unfortunately, that could happen mid-swing in PvP. And it's also said that higher intelligence will correlate with a larger condition bar. It follows that if you craft your own item, it'll probably be at full condition, but in effect, how many shots or swings you get out of that item will be a variable. There's a radiated beavers in Fallout 76, also just labeled as beavers. These ones are clearly mutated, and honestly, watching like the short clip of gameplay of these, doesn't it just kind of make you want to have them as a pet? Like, I'd love to have a few of these guys just running around my settlement. During Game Informer's videos on Fallout 76, they actually mentioned something they found out from Bethesda. We know Fallout 76's servers are going to have a cap of 24 players, but that's not like a hard cap. Basically, let's say one of your friends is playing on a server and it's at the cap of 24 players. You could still join his party. So servers will allow over 24 players when friends are joining other friends. Just as a side, that's a really cool feature and I wish some other games had something similar to this. Sometimes getting all of your friends on the right server is one of the hardest parts of playing video games. During IGN's gameplay, they actually stumble upon a ski sword. This is literally like a ski that you put on your foot but turned into a sword. It looks pretty awesome. Unfortunately, it of course was too high of a level so we don't have any gameplay of it but it definitely has a cool aesthetic to it. So this part's really more of a shout out than anything else. There's been a ton of people sending me messages asking if I knew of anybody that had footage of building in workshop mode or in camps in Fallout 76. In the little eye right now you can click and you'll find a link to the video I'm showing you. It's by Star Snipe. It only has 23,000 views despite being two days old, but it's basically just 10 minutes of talking about workshop mode and him actually using it himself. Even beyond that, we also do have a workshop building video. That's a little bit different. This one's also super informative by Ziggy D. I'll have it also linked in the little eye if you want to see that. Workshops are fundamentally different than camps in this. Camps are your personal settlements. You build them yourself and it might be just kind of your home in this game. Workshops are meant to be significantly more temporary. The workshop I found, I actually had to clear out a bunch of enemies in order to get access to it. But workshops actually had their own resources contained in them. It was kind of like I was borrowing it from the workshop to build things there 
Although there is another catch, you don't just get those things for free. Workshops are contestable. As you're holding these things, there's going to be ways of enemies that try and take it back from you. But even beyond that, there's going to be other players that can take this from you. You kind of enter into almost a King of the Hill style thing. The reason for this is all of these workshops have something special in them that make them valuable. The one I found in particular had a fusion core generator. As long as I had control of this workshop, it would produce fusion cores over time. That's of course very valuable either for trading or if you just had power armor yourself. So now we get into the kind of spoilery part of this video. Next, I'm going to be showing you gameplay of the Grafton monster, Mothman, and the Flatwoods monster. If you don't want to see any of that, I would recommend clicking off now, but if you do, here's the Grafton monster. This is one in particular that I really wanted to find while I was playing. Unfortunately, I can't. I thought it was one of the coolest looking ones from the trailer. Unfortunately, it kind of looks pretty basic. It doesn't look crazy. It seems fairly immobile, but like it would do a ton of damage. Then we also have somebody fighting against Mothman. This one is kind of anti- climatic. We've heard in other interviews that Mothman has various stages, so this could just be one of those stages. Maybe after taking him down here, it's like a boss fight. He might show up later in a greater form. By the way, I know a lot of people are looking for this. A full link to that video down below also. And then last but not least, the Flatwoods monster. This one in particular I know has been kind of annoying a lot of West Virginians. It's not exactly what the lore described, but Bethesda definitely took some liberties with this one. But as someone who doesn't know a ton about West Virginian lore, yeah, no, it's, it's kind of underwhelming. It definitely looks like it's going to be a cool and unique enemy, but at the same time, it just kind of looks like another enemy. There's nothing super crazy going on here, outside of the fact that it does go invisible from time to time. And it seems like you actually encounter this thing just randomly as you're exploring around Flatwoods, which at nighttime I could actually see this being particularly scary. But that's it, that's the list of 25 things you may have missed from the Fallout 76 gameplay. This is probably the last of these videos you'll see from me. I'm going to do one on all the weapons, all the creatures, and maybe even all the armors we have seen. I'm working on those now, so you'll see them probably in the next few days. But outside of that, we have the beta just a couple of weeks away. At that point, you're going to see a ton more content about Fallout 76. If you're looking forward to that, you can subscribe. I will have some other things, both Fallout 76 related and actually Fallout 4 and Fallout 3 related along the way. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this video entertaining, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later.